Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. This is a Q&A answer video in response to your really great Instagram questions. The first question was about breathing in a handstand, which is a really important topic, because in a handstand you want to keep your core engagement really tight it becomes difficult to breathe into your stomach. So what I do is I retain a shallow breath at the, at the top of the chest, which you can practice standing if you have trouble to do that in a handstand. So you really just tighten your core and then you try to like keep a shallow breath going just at the very top of your chest. So while this isn't great in the long run and can feel a little bit claustrophobic, that's kind of the way to go in your handstand practice. If I'm doing something very difficult, like a maximum strength move, then I'm gonna take a deep in-breath, do the movement, and then breathe afterwards, because it's not always um, possible for me either to breathe in every handstand position. In a press, for example, I take an in-breath, I do the press, and then I breathe afterwards. Likewise, in a side bend, in the actual side bend, I can't really breathe, so I usually take an in-breath and uh, then bend to the side. If you consistently find it really difficult to breathe, count the seconds that you're up in the handstand and that will help you to just uh, get over that reflex of holding your breath. I've got a longer video about this too, about how to not get a red head and how to breathe in a handstand. I'll put them in the description box below. Another great question was about what if your shoulders don't really have a good reflex for opening in a handstand. So in the kick up, we need to first round the back and then at the end here open. So while sometimes the problem here is the actual shoulder mobility, you kind of need to train the reflex to go from this position to open. So I'll show you two really great exercises for this. Round the back here and then push to an opening. So you can keep the knees bent, doesn't matter where your legs are here, but you can round and then open. So you can practice this thing of pushing down in a round back and then pushing almost like up and behind you. You can do a similar thing with the wall where you push into the wall and round and then you open. So you practice the difference between here and here. And if you do this within your handstand training, really just practicing difference between pushing front round and then in order to open you need to push up and behind you but keep the core engagement and that's a good way to practice it. So just do like repetitions of 10 of these exercises. If you already have your shoulder opening then this helps. But for your shoulder opening, you need to both have the passive and the active mobility. The active mobility in particular is what will help you to go from here to here because you're going to have to pull your arms back. You can't just lean into the shoulder opening. You will have to pull your arms back. Again, I've made a very good video about the difference between the active and passive mobility and that's also in the description box. How to grip the handstand blocks with your fingers. On the floor in a handstand you've got the benefit of being able to push into the floor. Here with the handstand block you will have to sort of pull the block towards you and grip it without clawing it. You want to pull the block sort of towards you and not just claw it. So the key thing is learning how to soften the palm enough so that you have a good pressure contact on the block with your palm. Grip the block but not claw and tense it in the way that the soft part of your hand also tenses because then it's going to start to lift off the block. And you don't want any air gaps between the flat big part of your palm here and, and the blocks ideally. My post handstand treat was one of the questions. Well, if I practice in the daytime, uh, there usually comes a point where I have to uh, eat something that's high in protein. So that's gonna usually be nuts or um, some kind of vegetarian sausage thing. 
And that keeps me going for another 45 minutes or so towards the end of my handstand practice. But yeah, there comes a point where I really crave protein. I, other than that, don't have post handstand treats so much, partly because I really like to practice in the evening, in particular late at night. So from 10 o'clock onwards, that is my favorite training time, very much opposed to uh, what a lot of people do who practice early in the morning. I love to practice at night. So then I'm not going to have a post training treat after that. Um, I'm just going to have um, tea. I find I don't need a treat after handstand training. For me, the more important question is what keeps me going? Because after an hour and a half or so, I'm going to have a bit of an energy dip and a sugary snack isn't quite going to do it. And then sometimes also, if uh, I've been training a lot or I've been rehearsing quite a lot, my body can feel very cranky and stiff. And then, for example, I find it really helps me to drink a lot of um, hot herbal tea during my practice and that feels to me like it's warming my body from the inside and that is going to help me through the practice. Thank you for watching and have a great day!